Hello friends, in this video we are going to study the stability of a transfer function of a given system in frequency domain. Okay, the stability in frequency domain is found out using a method called as body plot. Okay, before moving further we shall glance over some of the basic um, formulas of logarithms and complex numbers. solve one problem we shall understand it better let us consider transfer function in laplace domain h of s is equal to a t divided by s into s plus 2 into s plus 20 okay we have to convert the given transfer function into time constant format right that is if we are having s plus a type of terms in the transfer function it should be converted to tau s plus 1 okay that means we have to take a common out from s plus a that means the value of tau will be 1 by a the this tau is also known as break period in our transfer function we have s plus 2 we can write it as 2 into 0.5s plus 1 that is if we take 2 common from s plus 2 we will get 0.5s plus 1 similarly we also have s plus 20 okay it can be written as 0.05s plus 1 if we take out 20 common right now our transfer function changes to 80 divided by s yes into 2 into 0.05s yes plus 1 into 20 into 0.05s yes plus 1 okay further it can be simplified to 2 divided by s yes into 0.5s yes plus 1 into 0.05s yes plus 1 from the obtained new transfer function, we should find out break frequencies using break periods. We know the relationship between period as well as frequency as frequency is equal to 1 by time period, right? So, first break frequency is 1 by first break time period. So, first break time period is 0 0.5. So, therefore, first break frequency will be 1 by 0 0.5 which is equal to 2. Similarly, second break period is 0 0.05. Therefore, second break frequency will be 20. So, we have two break frequencies that are 20 and 2. Now, we shall start with magnitude plot. Our transfer function was h of s is equal to 2 divided by s into 0.5s plus 1 into 0.05s plus 1. As we are in magnitude plot, we require the values in magnitude, right? We, so, it is easy to find out magnitude of a complex function than a Laplace function. We will be changing the Laplace function to complex function by changing s to i omega in the transfer function. So, h of i omega is equal to 2 divided by i omega into 0 0.5 i omega plus 1 into 0 0.05 i omega plus 1. Wherever there was yes, it has been changed to i omega. Now, taking magnitude of this transfer function, mod of h of i omega is equal to mod of 2 divided by i omega into 0 0.5 i omega plus 1 into 0 0.05 i omega plus 1. Using the properties of complex numbers, 
we can write this as mod 2 divided by mod i omega into 0.5 i omega plus 1 into mod of 0 0.05 i omega plus 1. While plotting the values in semi-log graph sheets, we will be using decibel values of magnitude. Okay, For any given complex number z, its magnitude in decibels can be written as 20 log mod z to the base 10. So, in our case, we can write the magnitude in decibel as 20 log mod of h of i omega to the base 10. Its RHS part will be 20 log mod 2 divided by mod of i omega into mod of 0.5 i omega plus 1 into mod of 0.05 i omega plus 1. Using logarithmic properties, this can be written as 20 log mod 2 minus 20 log i omega minus 20 log mod of 0.5 i omega plus 1 minus 20 log mod of 0 0.05 i omega plus 1. We know magnitude can be written as 20 log 2 minus 20 log omega minus 20 log square root of 0.5 omega whole square plus 1 minus 20 log of root of 0 0.05 omega whole square plus 1. Okay. Let me name this equation as equation number 1. We will be using the values of this in the later part. Another part in this is phase angle plot. Okay, before moving to this phase angle plot, we should know three important result. That is, first one is angle formed by a constant value in the transfer function is always zero. Okay, the angle formed by zero at origin is plus 90 degrees and angle formed by a pole at origin, always it is minus 90 degrees. These three are very important results for our case. If z is equal to a plus ib is a complex number, then angle formed by this complex number with respect to origin is theta equal to tan inverse of b divided by a. Okay, that is imaginary part by real part. Let us consider a complex number which is product of two other complex numbers or quotient of two other complex numbers okay irrespective of multiplication or division of two complex numbers z1 and z2 the angle made by the resultant complex number with respect to origin is always angle made by first complex number plus angle made by second complex number that is theta is equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 where theta is angle formed by z theta 1 by z1 and theta 2 by z2 okay one more important results which we have to remember here is the angle formed by the poles will always carry negative sign with them and angles formed by zeros will always carry positive sign with them for our transfer function we can write it as total angle formed is equal to angle formed by 2 plus angle formed by i omega plus angle formed by 0.5 i omega plus 1 plus angle formed by 0 0.05 i omega plus 1 okay so angle formed by 2 which is constant will always be 0 and angle formed by i omega that is pole at origin will always be minus 90 degrees. 0.5 i omega plus 1 is a pole 
so it will take a negative sign so it will be minus tan inverse of 0.5 omega divided by 1 that is imaginary part 0.5 omega divided by 1 which is real part and 0 0.05 oi omega plus 1 is also a pole therefore it also takes a minus sign so we can write it as minus tan inverse of 0 0.05 omega divided by 1 we will call this equation as equation number 2 we will be using equation 1 and equation 2 for getting the values for different values of omega as we are plotting the graph in semi log graph sheets we will be varying our omega values from 0 0.1 to 100 as multiples of 10 okay so these are our equation 1 and equation 2 as we are plotting the graph in semi log graph sheet we will be assuming the omega values as multiples of 10 from 0 0.1 to 100 okay so we will make a table of three columns first column will be omega second column will be magnitude in decibels and third column will be angle in degrees okay so omega values as i said we will be assuming it from 0 0.1 to 100 as multiples of 10 so it will be 0 0.1 1 10 100 we had two break frequencies 2 and 20 so we will be considering them here after 100 i will be writing 2 and 20 okay so by putting the values of omega in equation 1 and equation 2 we will get the values of magnitude and angles respectively we will be using calculators to solve this and uh, fill this table quickly now we shall start plotting in semi log graph sheets okay as we move in x direction the values increase logarithmically okay so we will consider the value of omega in x direction we will be dividing the graph sheets into two halves okay first half we will keep it for magnitude plot and the second half for phase angle plot in magnitude plots our values in decibel range from minus 82.11 which is minimum value at omega equal to 100 to 26.009 which is maximum value at omega equal to 0.1 so our range in y axis for a magnitude in decibel will vary from minus 80 to plus 40 this range you can select for your convenience we will mark the points on the graph sheets minus 82.11 minus 43.5 minus 29.09 minus 3.05 5.4 and 26.009 okay now join all these line points using a straight line with scale we will consider 0 db line as a reference line for our magnitude plot wherever our magnitude curve crosses this 0 db line that point or that frequency point we will call it as gain crossover frequency okay similar to that of magnitude plot for phase angle plot also we will be having a range of plotting as per our convenience let us mark all the points on phase angle plot and join them using smooth curves okay we will consider minus 180 degree line as a reference line for our phase angle plot whenever the phase angle plot curve passes the minus 180 degree line that frequency we will call it as phase crossover frequency 
the reference line 0 dB line and minus 180 degree line is fixed for all the frequency domain analysis. So lastly we have to remember that if gain crossover frequency is less than phase crossover frequency then the system will be stable. If both are equal then the system is said to be marginally stable and if phase crossover frequency is less than gain crossover frequency then the system will become unstable. For our condition we have gain crossover frequency less than phase crossover frequency so our system will be stable. If you solve few more problems on this you will become perfect. If you have any doubt please write it below.